Good morning and welcome to worship on this Holy Trinity Sunday, a day in which we celebrate God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who gives comfort and life here in this place and for all time. So I'm starting a couple of minutes early because I do, I, I have a list of little items to um, provide for you that, that kept adding up. So I encourage you to grab a pencil if you are somebody who is interested in some details. So <clears throat> social ministry project for May. We are going to finally be finishing up our toiletry um, collection. We've had a wonderful um, amount of things brought in, but if you did still want to get a few things in, we will go through the end of the week um, to get those things in. Additionally, our Pampered Chef party, which we had last week, I think it was, it feels like many weeks ago already, but it is, um, this is a fundraiser for the church. It is going to remain open through the end of this week, so Friday. Friday the 31st is going to be the cutoff for that, um, so orders can still come in, and um, through many different um, gracious things that have happened, the church will get 40% of the sales from that event, and so far we are tallying somewhere over $2,000. We will will get final results. So the, uh, the uh, folks who have been in great want of some pampered chef is what it seems. But, so um, see Anne if you would like an order form. Um, for those who are online, if you um, do take a look through the Facebook links, you will find the uh, party link um, in there and so orders can still come in that we would get credit for if you finally decide um, that this thing that you were waiting on you actually would uh, like to purchase. So we are more than grateful for everyone. Um, folks brought in friends and neighbors and um, we are just so so incredibly grateful for um, the uh, amount of contribution we had to that uh, fundraiser. So wonderful, wonderful. Um, then I'm going to segue to our upcoming fundraiser, which is also a very fun event centered around eating. And that is our um, Harsh Burgers uh, basically Tuesday fundraiser day on June 4th. And um, tickets you do need a ticket, either electronic on your phone or a physical ticket for that day to show them um, so that the church will get credit for um, your meal. And um, we added in a couple of notes for this week. Um, there is a group of us who are going to head up that way um, to eat after Bible study on Tuesday. So we usually finish up around 2.15-ish um, most days. And so I'm thinking that we would probably be ready to get on the road sometime no later than 2.30 and head up that way. So if you would like to come to Bible study, we'll uh, actually, many of us will be here in the uh, council room. Um, so you're welcome to join us for Bible study and then head up for some fellowship time. If you would like to just meet us up there around three o'clock, I don't know my drive times well enough without uh, the map to tell me. Um, and want to just be there around that time so that um, we can have some fun together. That is great. Um, if there are folks who are planning to go up in the evening closer to around dinner time-ish, and you would like to make that known so that folks could just, again, in a very casual way, be there together around the same time to go and eat and just have some um, fellowship time, um, we can make that known. Becky let me know that um, they do take credit cards, but they add a, a processing fee for um, using your credit card. So if you would like to avoid that fee, just make sure that you take some cash with you. So I will have to remind myself to head to the ATM before um, we go up there, but it's, it's worth the extra step, it seems, to, to not have to pay the credit card processing fee. So just make note of that. And then 
this past Wednesday, we're going to consider this past Wednesday our official kickoff of the hiker meal season because we actually had real hikers appear at our um, fellowship hall. So we were grateful for that. 13 folks were here. Um, I think the farthest away was California. Um, so uh, we, we have definitely commenced the season. For this week, we do still need salad and dessert sign up. So if you are interested and willing to offer any of those things, Lisa has the sign up sheet in the back. So please see her. And um, we will hope to see that number continue to build up um, as, as we head into the season more fully. Um, let me see. I think at this time I'm gonna ask if any of you have announcements for the congregation. Not yet, but I'm gonna. It is good for me to have all the people who try to make sure I don't forget all the things I am supposed to remember. <laughs> I am not seeing any other announcements. Um, so as you will see in our uh, bulletin, we will be honoring our graduates of high school and college programs today. And so we um, will offer a blessing for Evan Still and Jonathan Lentvorsky and Kendra Mosser. And we are so happy to be able to do that um, during our worship. And then following the service, there will be a um, luncheon downstairs um, where it will be uh, Corn, chicken corn soup and ham salad and then of course cake. So for those of us who cake is the draw, you get cake after you get through um, your lunch. So, okay, and the, the, and you don't get to hear the rest of the menu. You have to come down to find out what else is down there. So um, please join us for that, um, and that way we can celebrate our graduates together. Uh, and that will be a wonderful time. Yes, Jerry. This being Memorial Day, I think we should uh, honor all veterans uh, so today, too. We are going to do that, too. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> So um, we offer a celebration and congratulations this week for those who are celebrating milestones. So happy birthday tomorrow to Sandy Morrison, and then later in the week on Saturday um, to Charlene Lentvorsky. Um, I will be celebrating uh, my anniversary with Lisa uh, by going to a meeting on Thursday that I mistakenly scheduled. And so, uh, say a prayer for me on that day anyway. <laughs> so um, blessings to all um, on these events and a very happy year ahead. Um, we would ask for your prayers. You can see in the calendar on Saturday, um, actually Friday night we have an online session, but then on Saturday um, myself and Bill and Cindy will be heading to York for the annual Lower Susquehanna Synod Assembly. So um, please uh, think of us as we are doing the critical and important work of the church um, all day on Saturday. So um, with that, before we begin our worship, as Jerry has so rightly um, reminded us, this is a day, um, this, this weekend um, offers to us a day in which our nation remembers those who have offered a sacrifice that goes beyond words. And so we would offer a prayer for them. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for all those who have offered themselves for the sake of others in service to this nation. We especially thank you for those in our military throughout history who have sacrificed their lives for their fellow citizens and for us who have come after. As we remember their service, keep us mindful of all for those whom these memories bear the scars of grief and loss. Send your Holy Spirit of comfort to them today and always. Be present with all those who serve in the military today. As a nation, let us live for the peace known that comes only from you. Keep us mindful of the service borne by those called to serve. 
in all things, may we live our lives in praise and thanksgiving to you always as instruments of your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. We begin our worship together. O oh, Holy Trinity, one God in three persons. We O oh, Holy Trinity, one God in three persons. We behold in the face of Jesus Christ, your divinity and our humanity. O oh, Holy Trinity, one God in three persons. We behold in the spirit of truth, your glory and our calling. Blessed are you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Together, we sing our gathering hymn number 574.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the reading. Reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraphs touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. To the Lord, the glory do God's name. <clears throat> Worship the Lord. <clears throat> the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The Lord's Lord is upon the A voice of spring. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a can and mount Hermon like a young wild ox. 
the voice of the Lord burst forth, burst forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying glory. Sits a throne above the head. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Second readings from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Congregation may be seated. 
grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As pastors approach Trinity Sunday, there is something of a nervous joke that floats around, especially in the social media spaces. Be careful what you say when you preach about the Trinity, because with one slight misstep, you just might commit heresy. And it is most certainly true that the Trinity doctrine is complicated and complex, even for us pastors. It is a doctrine derived from scripture, but not mentioned explicitly in the Bible anywhere. It is deeply rooted in scripture, yet not explained by Jesus or Moses or any other prophet for that matter. There are signs and hints and whispers of the Trinity in so many of our Bible stories, but they're not obvious, and they are most certainly not agreed upon by all readers of our scriptures. The concept of Trinity was referenced by early church theologians as early as the second century. At the Council of Nicaea in the year 325, in words that we still speak in church today, the Nicene Creed was written and in it describes the divine persons of God, the creator, Jesus, the son who was begotten not made, of one being with the Father, and the Holy Spirit, who is worshipped and glorified alongside the Father and the Son. Formally, the Trinity is, quote, a central Christian belief that states that God exists as three distinct persons, but equally divine among them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity expresses the idea that God is one in essence, but three in person, end quote. And by this point, I'm guessing that some of you have probably already started to think about just what might be on the luncheon menu uh, after fellowship. These things can make your brain hurt, and they can also be as dry and as boring as you can imagine. And that is the farthest Thing from the Trinity. Over the centuries, the belief in the Trinity doctrine has become a measurement and a marker about believing in God the right way, making sure that you had the correct faith. Trinity was used as a way to judge right belief versus wrong, a way to cast out the heretics among us, those who were accused by those in power of believing the wrong way. The church killed people for failure to comply with the right way of believing. And when that happens, when that is what a church doctrine creates, we can know that that is exactly when we have missed the point. Nothing about that reveals the Trinity among us. Any time scripture becomes a weapon, any time scripture becomes a source of punishment or rejection or condemnation, we can be sure we have left the true realm of the Trinity, the one whom we meet when we actually study our scriptures. For our Trinitarian God creates in love. In great love, God sent the Son into the world in order to save the world. Jesus tells his followers that because he cares about all of us so much, after he ascends, God will send the Holy Spirit to be with us forever, the one who will guide us and comfort us and lead us and build up our faith. Jesus tells us over and over again that the truth that he reveals is that love is always the metric by which we can understand God. 
God demands our total worship and devotion to God alone. Of that, we can be sure. But God does not condemn our questioning and our wandering and our doubts. God rather guides us toward trust and assurance that comes from this Trinitarian essence who does not cast off those who wander and stray, but rather God sends the Son and the Spirit to seek those who are lost and hurting and wandering. Today in our gospel, we see this very love in action. A respected and learned man, a Pharisee, one who was an expert in the law of Moses, an expert in the Jewish faith, comes to see Jesus. But he does so at night. It seems he doesn't want any of his fellow Pharisees to know that he is seeking out Jesus. Because already Jesus is seen as a potential problem by the religious leaders. His teaching is different. He does not bear allegiance to the temple authorities, for he speaks with a new type of authority. And the powers that be aren't really sure that they approve. Nicodemus comes to ask the questions in his heart, to try and learn, to try and understand who Jesus is. Because you see, if Nicodemus gets this wrong, he just might be labeled a blasphemer and a heretic. And we've already covered what happens to heretics. The story never changes. This reality will put Jesus himself on the cross, labeled as a blasphemer. But that is a story for another day. Here in our gospel, Jesus' ministry is just beginning. Nicodemus approaches Jesus with his confusion. He says, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do the signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Nicodemus leaves the harder words unsaid, for those would be life-changing indeed. The unspoken words that he holds back most certainly point to the reality that those who have seen these signs from Jesus see them as not only signs from God, but just possibly signs of God. For a people who have been watching and waiting for the Messiah for over 500 years, it seems impossible for them to believe that the one whom God had promised has actually arrived, but in the form of this carpenter from Nazareth. They all ask, how can these things be? With anxiety and uncertainty and doubt and hope, Nicodemus encounters the Christ there at night in the dark. Jesus doesn't make it easy on him, for none of this way of faith is ever easy. All of it requires our hope and our trust and our passionate heart to seek the truth and to be willing to discern where the Spirit leads us. That night, Jesus tells Nicodemus that no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above, and no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit, essentially born by the power of the physical and the divine through water and the word. Nicodemus is confused. He doesn't understand. He rightly says, we cannot enter the womb a second time the divine mystery leads us toward the truth, though, that we must become a people of spirit, born of the spirit's love and guided by the spirit's actions. Jesus does not mandate a ritual when he speaks these words to Nicodemus. Rather, he offers him and all of us an invitation an invitation to leave behind the ways of this world and to enter into this divine space 
to see the kingdom, to experience the gift of life given by God for us. We must be a people born of spirit. We must be a people who dwell in the awesome power and majesty of the divine every day. We cannot do that on our own. Sin gets in the way. And so we must be born ever and always anew by the Spirit's holy work in us. Jesus invites Nicodemus to look beyond what he thinks he knows, to dwell deeper in the reality of a God who lives and moves within and among us. This is not a stagnant faith. This is not some faith of boring and dusty doctrine. We have a faith given to us by Jesus, which requires bravery and commitment, even in the dark of night. It is a faith that hears Jesus calling us out from the world, out from the darkness, and into a new way of living that will lead us to God, a living utterly filled to overflowing with grace and love and mercy. Trinitarian faith is one which trusts God's guidance and listens for the word of God. And it is a faith willing to be moved by the power of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit who arrived on Pentecost came with the sound of a violent, powerful wind, the very breath of God. And that wind changes the world. The flames of fire that appeared that day burn still today, even if we think we can't see them. This fire refines the world according to God's will. The Trinity offers us a description of God's essence, which is revealed in countless ways. The Spirit was present at creation, hovering over the waters as God's word went forth, and order and life was created. The Spirit of God hovers over those waters of baptism, which claimed you as a child, beloved of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are a people guided into new life, filled with God's Spirit to proclaim truth to denounce falsehood, to condemn the destruction of God's people, especially any who are oppressed or cast aside. We trust in our God to guide our hearts and minds into the love of God alone. We understand God's essence to be one of love, the most deep, abiding love dwells among the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, and comforter. Love swirls and swells and flows within the three in one, and it flows out across all creation and invites us to step inside this holy love into the fullest expression of God's love with God such that it will flow out from us out into the world where we live. Father Richard Rohr describes this flow as a dance, the never-ending movement of God. He says, the triune God allows you, impels you to live easily with God everywhere and all the time, to see all the places where God dwells, which is everywhere, in the budding of a plant, in the smile of a neighbor, through the excitement of children's laughter and a teenager's passion, in the tireless determination of workers at their job, in the pride of one who lifts up that which is created through the loving feel of animals around us, the tenderness of a mother feeding her young. All of this grounded, practical, and felt is the lived experience the Trinity offers us. And through it all, we are reconnected with God, with ourselves, with others, and the very creation around us. This triune God 
lives and moves and shapes us, leading us to embrace the divine, to dwell in the grace, mystery, and majesty where the kingdom is revealed. God longs for this world to experience life as God does, fully, filled with giving and creating, loving and sharing. The late Rachel Held Evans encourages us all on this Holy Trinity Sunday, when it all might seem just a little bit too confusing, when we wonder why we should really care at all, she says, keep searching, keep wondering, keep learning about God, and you will find God revealed in places where you feel safe and loved. That is the world where the Trinity dwells. That is the dance where you are all invited. That is the place where the triune God will be forever. That is the place where we will all be. For God has promised that it will be so. And what God promises, God's will is done. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. We sing our hymn of the day.
congregation may be seated. We are delighted to recognize and celebrate the achievement of three of Christ Lutheran Church's young adults. It is our privilege to congratulate and affirm Jonathan Lentborski and Kendra Mosser as they graduate from college, and Evan Still, who graduates from Newport High School. We rejoice with them and their families as they conclude one phase of their lives and move with great expectations to another. I invite the graduates to come forward. As you celebrate your achievements and prepare to begin new endeavors, we pray that you will be mindful of your grounding in faith and of your vocation to serve God in all your life's work and accomplishments. We hear a reading from Proverbs. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge God, and God will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I would ask you to turn and face the congregation. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless your servants with many achievements. We give thanks especially for the milestones that Evan, Jonathan, and Kendra have attained. As they begin new phases of their lives, may they also know your love and experience your peace in all that they encounter. Bless also the parents and grandparents, godparents and mentors of these students who have raised these children and nourished them in the Christian faith. Grant to each of these graduates the knowledge of your continuing presence. Strengthen them as they grow into new phases of their lives. Give them joy and peace in the certainty of their baptism that they have been claimed forever as your children. When life's challenges come their way, remind them ever and always that you have promised to be with us always to the end of the age. As life's journeys guide them to new homes and new places of study and work, remind them that they are always family here and that together you have bound us together in fellowship and family, that we might never bear the burdens and struggles of this life alone. We ask all these things through the power of the Holy Spirit, who Christ promised to accompany us all our days. Amen. You can turn and face me one last time. Evan, Jonathan, and Kendra, go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve our God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us offer congratulations to the graduates. You may return to your seats. As one people of faith, I ask you to stand as you are able. We join in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you, Eric. Peace be with you, Kim. Oh, I'm sorry. Peace be with you, Go ahead. Peace, Joe. come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Abba Father, you have brought us into your family, claiming us as beloved children. Bless your family of faith with gifts of cooperation and graciousness. Increase our hospitality toward all expressions of faith and teach us to honor our shared humanity. Merciful God. Your love and power burst forth in the flashes of lightning, the dance of the wind, and the deeply rooted trees of the forest. Sustain fragile and interconnected ecosystems that they flourish for generations to come. Merciful God. Give your blessing of peace to the nations. Shelter all who risk life and livelihood to protect others from violence, conflict, and injustice. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are a God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore wholeness to all who seek hope and healing. We pray for Shirley, Alan, Pat, Audrey, Sarah Jane, Roger, Charlotte, Joanne, Jack, Kathy, Millie, Jerry, Roxy, Karen, Darlene, Lillian, Ron, Chuck, Connie, Helen, Carol, and Jesse. Merciful God. The Spirit bears grateful witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints. As they lived with hope in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in faith that we recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal life. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. Our lives belong to God and we reach great, greatest fulfillment when we are accomplishing God's purpose. We are living right when we can respond to God's calling with an enthusiastic, here I am, send me. We will now worship God with our offering. Congregation may be seated.
pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will, and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, come. thy Thy will will be be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So come to this table. You who have much faith, and you who would like to have more, You who have been here often and you who have not been for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who are wandering still. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
For those who will commune in your place, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God said, whom shall I send and who shall go for us? And Isaiah said, here am I send me. Life-giving God, free us from our fear, fill us with your love, and send us forth in peace. And may the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. We sing our sending hymn number 413.
at Christ Lutheran Church are Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Be right over. 